Playing on board? The missions, yeah. But I did it for. Yeah. Okay. Let me copy. So we're probably going to do a few few minutes of just chit chat so we can do a sound. I chat. understand. So, so we'll, oh, we're rolling. Okay. Uh, my name is Ed Clendenin. Uh, we're at the. Uh, 2007 annual reunion of the 376 Bombardment Group Veterans Association. Um, so, for the record, could you state your name, please? Yeah, I'm Frank Kean. Okay. And when, when, and where were you born? I was born in Chicago, August 31st, 1924. 1924. Okay. And uh, which squadron were you in? 515. 515. Okay. Um, so if you were born in 44, you were fairly young when you went into the service, is that correct? About 18. About 18. <laughs> were you drafted? Did you enlist? No, I enlisted. You enlisted? I wanted to be a paratrooper. A paratrooper? And went through the whole examination, and at the end they told me I'm too light. I didn't weigh enough. You couldn't believe that now, but that was at that time. You were too late. And so they told me to take another branch of service until I can put on some weight and then transfer over to the paratroopers. So I took the Air Force, and thank God I did. Because I, I dropped troopers one time, and I thought, by golly, I'm glad I'm not in that group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so what position What position did, were you on? You assume you were an air crew? No, I was a mechanic. Oh, you were I a went mechanic. to Keesler Field uh, upon uh, my enlistment, and then finished up, went to uh, Sacramento, and then transferred over on the, and shipped over on the USS America to Egypt, and then joined the... 376 at Benghazi in late 42. In late 42? And I Six served all through the African campaign as a mechanic and in the 515th and then uh, in, into San Pancrasio. And one day a crew came out, they were going to go on a mission, and the engineer just balked. He just laid down, he, he wouldn't go. And so the line chief came to me and said, Frank, you want to go on flying status? I've been over there two years. I thought, I'll never get home. Yes, I'll take it and fly my 50 missions and go. So I took the mission. Next day, I went to Steyr, the first raid on Steyr, and went shot down with the other eight aircraft. So you were on the February 23rd mission to Steyr? 23rd. And you were on one of the eight planes that got shot down that day? I was a flight thing? with the, the pilot of that crew was White, was Jim White. White. Jim White. Okay, and that was your. That was your we were first tail and Charlie's. Yeah. And you, you were the substitute flight engineer. On I was team? a substitute flight engineer. Did you become then a POW? No, uh, we had got hit over Steyr. Both flak and fighters got coming. I had lost the number two engine, and the uh, number four was starting to go on me too. And we just decided I was close to the Yugoslav-Austrian border, uh -huh. and he said we got to get out of here because the fire started again and we bailed out. Okay. All of us. We all, all made it. You all made it out? We all made it out. And were you rescued no, by the I was, or the Czechnik? No, what happened is I was, I, I landed in the, up in the mountains in the snow. And coming down on the chute, I had seen a small village, a small few houses, and I thought, well, that's where I'll head for and turn myself in. Because okay. my biggest worry, I never carried a weapon, I thought, what, I'm going to eat, be eaten by bears and wolves. So. I uh, started heading for that uh, small village and got picked up by two Austrians behind me on skis, and they helped me down. I, I had trouble walking in the deep snow. They made uh, snowshoes for me out of uh, pine broth, and uh, I started walking down. They had a, uh, took me into the village, and uh, that evening they helped us get across the border, and I was, was joined up with a Tito, Partizana Patrol. Oh. And then, because we were right on the border. And I went into a town called Delnice and stayed there for a few weeks and then walked across half of Yugoslavia to Tito's headquarters in Petrovac, uh, Yugoslavia, and got flown out of there with an old Len Lee C 47 flown by a Russian pilot. And since we had been there the longest, we had a priority. First, we took the wounded and the sick. And then those that had seniority got on, and we got on. I flew to Barry and uh, went over to the San Pancrazio, got my stuff back, from what was taken from out of the tent, and made my way, and they shipped me home to America. Really? So you didn't even have to fly your 50 missions? No. 
I finally made it home. Made it, finally made it home. Yeah, on one mission. So was the one mission worth it? <laughs> yes, it was. I, uh, it was good to get home. And that convinced you you were glad you weren't a paratrooper? Yes, it did. No, that didn't. But uh, I, I made, I'm a good example of an advocate for volunteering. Uh -huh. I discharged World War II, joined the reserves in 47 in Chicago. Uh -huh. 1950, recalled to Korea for two and a half years. So you served in Korea I also? I served in Korea on 46, flying supplies and so forth into Korea and bringing back wounded. So you were a And we group? dropped paratroopers at the Incheon Landing, MacArthur's Incheon Landing and so forth. And I saw those fellows go out and I figured that was, I'm glad I never made it. So you were a crew member then in, in the Korean conflict? Yes, I was, a okay. flight engineer also on C-46s. C-40s, oh, interesting. So back to your, your uh, with white crew, you said all the guys made it out? Yes, we did. And did all of them end up in Tito's headquarters? And yes, we were all together. We got a, the, the, uh, the Austrians brought us all together. They picked us all up. Really? And uh, they fed us that, that evening and then uh, helped to get us across the border. Were you surprised that the Austrians helped you? No, because the Austrians didn't like the Germans either. Oh, so even though they had been taken <laughs> they, over they're by, part the, of by German, Germany, but, but yeah, a lot of Austrians, even today, they don't like the Germans. Because <laughs> don't Germans and Austrians, or at least the Germans, yeah, think that they're, they're the Germans feel that the Austrians are German? Germans, okay, because I know <laughs> because the language is German. Because Hitler, Hitler was, was Austrian. born in Austria. Yeah, he was Austrian, but he yeah. claimed to be I know. a little village not far from Salzburg. Where Hitler, Hitler was, born. was born, yeah. Okay. So I, have, I, I know that you live in Austria part time, right? Yes, I do. I live six months. My wife inherited her folks' bed and breakfast in a little town called Mernikirchen, 100 miles south of Vienna. Okay. And uh, we fixed it up and we keep it now. And I, I've had some 376 members come over, and other friends come over. You're more than welcome to come okay. over also. I, my wife and I definitely. What you have my card, I know. Yes. So, um, now did you meet your wife on this? this no, trip indirectly. Austria? Indirectly. indirectly. Okay. Uh, when I, there, I put a little note on a, on a card and said, if you're ever in Chicago, you know, look me up. I'd like to pay you back and I uh -huh. take you out to dinner. Because the girls came into this little barn that we were in when they first oh. took, picked us up. And the Burgermeister came in, and, and, the, and the girls came in. They wanted to see what the Americans looked like. And I just wrote, if you're ever in Chicago, and that card went from hand to hand. Anna Marie was going to come over to work for the German newspaper in 1947. Uh -huh. In fact, tomorrow, today is my 60th anniversary. Oh. <laughs> and okay. uh, she, uh, someone said, maybe you can find this fellow. And she went to the worked for the German newspaper, the album post, on a visa for, I think it was for three months. And she, uh, <coughs> a friend of mine married a girl from Estonia, a fellow by the name of Johnson, and uh, his wife worked there. And Anne Marie was wondering if we could find this fellow. And the girl said, my God, that's a friend of my husband. So they invited me over for dinner, and a week later we were married. And, oh my God. And well, you know, we go to dinner sometimes in Austria with many of Anna Marie's friends, and there's a little girl that's always inquisitive, and she would always pride, and she would always say, Frank, was this love at first sight for you? I said, no, her visa was up, and we had to go over right away and get it registered so she could stay. Wow, okay. <laughs> but that was 60 years ago. So you don't necessarily remember her from your... No, I never saw her. But you never saw her, okay. No. So she, all she had was this little card with her name Little information with the name Frankie in Chicago. In the ad. Now, could when you were when you were making your way out? Did, I mean, did you speak German or anything? That yes, that's I. I was more or less the interpreter for our group. Oh, okay. Uh, because I would attend the meetings that the Yugoslavs had, the Croatians, and Tito's partisans, and then they would discuss what we're going to do the next day and how we're going to go and what we're going to do. And then I would go back and tell the group. So, what did you think of Tito? I am uh, very grateful to. Him. Okay. Because I know he became a I, he already was At a his headquarters, uh, Churchill's son was there. Churchill's son? Was there as an envoy. Randall? The partisans were supplied by the British. Uh -huh. And we supplied the Chetniks. It was always on the wrong side. You were on the wrong <laughs> yeah. side. Or we were but, on the wrong uh, side. Yeah. And so uh, Churchill's son was there. And there was a Navy group there, weather uh, fellas. They would report at weather to Barry Italy every really? day. 
So they were like so the they were there, weathermen? And they were there. And, uh, you know, I had such a craving for sweets. You could never get sweets in Austria. The food wasn't that good either. But I had a, such a craving. And they had on, uh, orange marmalade. And I'm afraid I almost had their whole supply of orange marmalade. <laughs> but it, uh, in so fact, it, it was all for good. Now, when you were, you, I think you said it was 40 days from the time you bailed out to the time you got back? Or did I it was almost, that? well, from the time I bailed out, 23rd of February, I got back around the uh, 1st of June. Oh, so it was a couple months. Yeah. Now, did you, were you able to, during that time, were you seeing missions or being flown by Part the 15th? Oh, yeah, I could see them going over, watch some ships have motor problems, turn around and go back, back. drop out, and some head for Switzerland. <laughs> or something on that basis. But it, uh, yeah, I've I seen the missions go over. Now, the, the 15th bombed targets in Yugoslavia, correct? I mean, they bombed German troop concentrations and stuff in Yugoslavia, or am I missing Oh, sure they did. Sure they did. And I take, I take, did, did Tito and stuff help identify the target? I don't know. You don't I, know? I really wouldn't know on that. They probably did, because I'm sure there was an awful lot of. Uh, Correspondence between Barry Etley and Tito's headquarters. Okay, but Tito didn't convey strategy or just get no, with you. With no, no, Barry. I just talked to a few. Just I was introduced to them. They were in a building in in Petrograd, and every night we would. I was there almost uh, almost ten days. Uh -huh. But every night we would walk out to this makeshift airfield and see if a plane would come in. And if they heard the motors, they would light the barrels uh -huh. for fire. And just, he would come in, but uh, nothing happened. Then I would walk back and then go out. And then one night, this C-47 came in. But it was flown by a Russian. It was flown by a Russian. It had Russian uh, officers aboard that were coming in to train the partisans or bring messages to Tito. I don't know. Did, did they speak English at all? No. So I, in fact, I never even talked to them. I just see him come off did, the how plane. Did, did, how did they tell... Uh, they communicate to fly you, or was that normal for them, the Russians, to fly? I think they flew in quite a bit. In the Barry? Yeah. Not the Barry, but to uh, Yugoslavia. Oh, okay. But, okay. So they're not the ones... And then the plane went on to Barry. Okay. And took us to Barry. Okay. Was that was that the Russian crew also, or that was... Yeah, it was just a yeah, Russian crew. It was just Russian the, two pilots. Just two pilots? Yeah. So they would fly from Yugoslavia into Barry? They would fly from Russia into Yugoslavia into Barry. Barry, drop off whatever supplies... In Yugoslavia, and take on... People? POWs and people and fly into Barry. And then I assume we would give them supplies and they'd fly it back or whatever? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, I really don't. Know. Interesting. Okay. Do you re Have you remained in contact with the other members of that crew or did you kind of feel like you were an no, outsider? No, lost them. And they're, they're never attended the 376. They're not listed anywhere. Never did. I tried to call uh, a radio operator. Uh -huh. I met, I when I when I was being shipped to Korea at Sacramento, a, a, uh, the Army, uh, the Air Force uh, crews that flew uh, passengers and so forth, I forget now what the title was for this, but, but they, uh, he, this radio operator came home. He was a radio operator on the C-40 or C, D, I guess it was a, uh, DC-3, but he would fly all over the, the world with him and uh, carry passengers and so forth. And then he came up, and I was just going out to our plane, and we talked for a few minutes. He eventually went back and married a girl from Delmice, Yugoslavia. Oh, okay. Now, going back in time, you said you arrived at in, in December of 42? At the 376, is that right? Did I remember? Yeah, that? it was no, it was uh, October, November. Like, October, went in, November. Into 40, Benghazi. We got off the ship at Suez and went to Egypt, Cairo, Egypt, and got on a, a truck and they took us to Benghazi. And then, the, <coughs> then when they went to Infadaville and then um, on up in I went on up to, yeah, to Infadaville, yeah. Tunis, and then into, uh, I took an LST. And, Took a jeep with some equipment and so forth, and got off the LST and drove to Ben Guy to San Pancrazio. So you were there when the Lady Be Good. Oh yeah, I school. went on that. I searched we, our ship. I was the mechanic. I was a mechanic on crew. Uh -huh. I was an assistant crew chief, really, yeah. and, and uh, I uh, 
for a week we went out searching for them. So I, you actually got up in the air and flew around? Oh, yeah, I flew them. quite a bit. Every time I changed an engine, I would go up with them on the test flight. On check test flight? Check out flight? Yeah, and I've flown other flights with them, too, uh -huh. but never a bombing mission. Right, but you would for check yeah. out. And then yeah, but for the Lady Be Good, we searched a week, primarily out in the desert. Uh, you, you said, you was it the 515? 515. Because Lady Be Good was in the 514. Five, well, every squadron went out oh, looking for them. We all went out. There must have been half a dozen ships every day going out trying to find them. I assume that procedure was true of, you, of any plane that was lost or missing yeah, and didn't never yeah. report it. Of course, the only one, that's the only one I know. So that at the time, it was, I mean, that procedure was normal. And there was nothing necessarily unique about what you were doing for Lady Be Good versus any other no, plane that was lost. No. And then after a while, you just gave up? We just knew that it, it never came back. Never and came it, back. It, they knew it was coming back and it must have gone somewhere. So when they finally found it 15 years later? The oil, well, it was more than that. Or was it, was yeah. however long ago? Did it suddenly click in your mind? Oh, we it was something like that. 30 years 30? before they found it. It was some oil company that right. people found it. Did it click in your mind? Oh, I remember looking for that. Oh, place. yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay. So. What was it like maintaining airplanes in the desert? I heard it was, uh, it was sand everywhere. Yeah, it was. It was rough. It, it, uh, and you get dust storms, and there was always dust around. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things that remained most of my mind is that when you fell asleep, you woke up in the morning, you shook your shoes out before the, to make sure there was no uh, scorpions, scorpions in, there, in your shoes. shoes. And uh, we would play with kangaroo rats that would be floating around the desert. But the one nice thing about being in Benghazi was we were right on the Mediterranean. And as soon as the ships took off, we headed for the beach. Ah, so you were surfing yeah. and swimming while yeah. they were on the mission? And, yeah. And then when they came back, you spent all <coughs> patching them up and getting them ready for the next mission? If they, were, if they needed work, we had checked them out and did our work on them and so forth. Now, Ray Hovis, did you know him at the time? No. Or Because I thought he was over there. In a, in a similar capacity, I didn't know if you knew him or not. The bell, the name is familiar, but I, I can't. Place He's him also right. an active yeah. veteran in the yeah. association, and I knew Ray arrived roughly the same time you were yeah. talking about. So interesting. So, uh, what was it like to, when you finally moved into Italy? Do you, was the thought, gee, we're, we're maybe we're winning this? Winning war? <laughs> a little bit, not really. It's it just uh, just another base, another place to. Okay. Fly out of. We knew we were winning the war when we left Africa. We knew African okay. Corps was defeated, and we were on our way and getting in closer. Okay. But uh, it uh, it was still a long war to go. True. And uh, one of the missions that I always remember is getting, getting the ship ready for was Casino. Monte Casino. Monte Casino. Because I remember the crews all had to go to uh, went to church and we. Given aberration or something to go ahead. That was early February of '44. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Casino was around February. Because I think my father yeah. was there, and yeah. I think he went to Casino. Yeah. He was on twelve. Yeah. yeah, I've been there several times now After since that? it's been rebuilt. Okay. The United States government paid for the rebuilding, and the casino is better than it ever was. <laughs> One of the supposed controversies about that mission was the belief whether or not the Germans were using it as a as a lookout. It was. It was a tremendous advantage for them. It, it held up the armies. Uh, the greatest loss sustained there was by the Polish army. Polish. Taking over the... Trying to trying to take over the army. They have a large graveyard there now uh -huh. with thousands of Poles. Okay. So we, we pretty much needed to take it out as a, as a lookout. It had to be taken out. But all we did was just help it. Yeah. We made the rubble and they hid in the rubble. Now, the 376, you were, you were down in, uh, well, let me go back and do something. Else. Since you were there in 42, you were there when Tidal Wave was, was the, that mission was flown. Do you remember? No, no. No, you weren't no, there? No, no, I came in right after. Okay, I thought you were there in You're 40. talking Tidal Wave was the first mission that was to Pulaski. That was out of Egypt. So look. Correct. Okay, yeah. The, the, three, the Halpro went to Ploesti in June of 42. 42. Then August and I didn't of, get over there until almost right. October, November. But in August of 43, was Oh, that was the first Pulaski. That was the big The Pulaski raid you're and talking about. you were about. there. You were there. Oh, yeah. Then. In fact, that ship was on it. Your, one of your and ships we came back. 
uh, 88 was my airplane. To 88 was your airplane? And uh, it came back. Came back every time. Made it the whole war. From what I heard, I talked to a member here who had flown in. He always wanted to fly 88 because it was a good luck airplane. But it came back every time. Did 88 have a name? I mean, on those aren't names. No. No, it was just no. number 88. Yeah, just 88. Who, who was the pilot on that entire oh, plane on 88? Every day there was a different the pilot. pilot. Every raid was a different one. Okay. So what was it like getting, I mean, when you were getting ready for that mission, did everybody know it was something big? No. No? You didn't no, know? No. Went to the briefing and said, it's going to be Steyr, near Linz. They told you it was going to be Steyr? Yeah. And then they changed they, it to? The briefing, they take no, it was there, it was Steyr. And well, that was the mission you were shot down on? Yeah. No, but I mean, when you were getting ready for Tidal, when you were preparing number 88 for? For Pulaski? For, for Pulaski. Oh, I even went on practice mission, low level. They probably, I would they fly over the Mediterranean, go over to Malta. We'd make a pass over Malta. I, I went on the mission, on the training. Training mission. Missions. Because we flew them all, for almost a couple of weeks before. Yeah, because they stopped. Off. We didn't know it was going to be Pulaski. Right. But we knew it was going to be a low-level attack. It was going to be something different. Because they, uh, they didn't they build a, like a target in the desert? Yes, they people did. Well, not over? the desert. Out, uh, it was an island out in the oh, Mediterranean. Oh, it was an island. Okay. So they did a bunch of, because they stopped flying missions, I think, in mid-July. About that, yeah. To practice. Yeah, and we were practicing. And you got to go on some of those oh, practice missions? Oh, I would missions. go along for the ride. What was it like to fly at 50 feet or however low? At, weren't they that low or how low oh, were yeah. they? It's close within 100 feet. Or something how, like how, was that a pretty exciting? Yeah. To I, uh, when I went into Korea, and uh, before I went into Korea, I was. I came back. I was an instructor's indoctrination school yeah. in Galveston, Texas, and they also uh, we had B-17s also, and I uh -huh. was an instructor on B-17, B-24. But we flew weather missions, uh -huh. and I would go at twenty-eight thousand, yeah. and then come down to the deck, yeah. and I flew over ten. I brought water back in the bomb bay. <laughs> it scared the death out of me. Some of those pilots, because wow. they were all returnees also, and they were uh, swagger groups. They. Uh, they were hot rod pilots. Must have been kind of exciting. Well, I was telling a story the other day. I was on a training mission. We were instructors. I was instructing flight engineers. There were navigator instructors and pilot instructors. The instructor's indoctrination unit was to be teaching fellows to be instructors. And then they would go out. But I stayed on as an instructor there. Mm -hmm. And uh, flying with a B-17 one time, and, or not a B-17, but a 24. And the two pilots were arguing, the instructor pilot said, you can land this without power. And the guy said, no, you can't. He said, yes, you can. And he cut the engines. And we came in on a glide deal. You did Steep stick dive, the you did dead stick, stick the and 24? came in. And with the dive, he made the, and about enough speed to come in on a landing. Scared to death out of me. I was ready to push those throttles <laughs> back forward. forward. I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> but he did it. So since you flew both the 17 and the 24, what was your? Oh, 24. Was 24 my, was a yeah, better plane. To me, it was better. It was okay. my, my, it was my baby, and I, I, I liked it better. Because there's always this little ongoing. Well, I had a little more room too, open. and and uh, you carried bigger cargo, yeah, longer went, distance. Went faster. Yeah. But the 17 flew higher, right? No, about the same. So about the same. Yeah, okay. the same. I don't think there was that much difference between them. Sorry, I had my microphone. Okay. Um, so back to your on your star mission, you were the flight engineer. What what did you man the top turret or the waist? I went over, got checked out on the top turret real quick from the okay. armament section. Okay. And I was going to got I started to get into the top turret. Uh, our ball turret got stuck. Okay. And we tried to can it. I couldn't get in. So the ball turret operator went up in the top turret. So I was between the pilot and the co-pilot all the, the whole flight. So even during the it was a probably a probably what a good thing because the minute we got hit on number two, she just burst and was in flame, and I was able to cut the fuel on that real quick. That stopped the fire for a while, anyhow. So, the, but then eventually I we couldn't feather number two, and she eventually just windmilled and then jammed up. What happens when it runs away like that? It, the you know, pistons, everything just jam up, jam up and lock. And it gives you a terrific drag, too. 
And then when number four was starting to go on us too, he just he couldn't hold it anymore. We were losing altitude. I went out about fifteen thousand feet. Hmm. Okay. The uh, was the sta was standing between the pilot and the co-pilot the normal yeah. position for the yeah because I would keep an eye on the instruments too and watch it. Okay. And when we tried to when we got hit, we tried to feather and couldn't get it feathered either. It just blew everything out inside the. Number two, and number two is the hydraulic pressure too for the coming in, change. Since you spent a certain, I mean, a fair amount of time from the ground crew perspective, when you went, I mean, I realized that you ended up. It was a fairly exciting, and non-normal. Was the was the mission everything you thought it was going to be? Was it different than you thought it was going to be? I had no idea. You had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, I I knew, it. you know, I had stories from the fellows that would come back and right. so forth like that. But I didn't think we were going to be on the top one of the toughest raids that were made. It was bad as the one that the twelfth made to Vincenzo. Yes. They were waiting for us. One of the reasons they're waiting for I've been to that area now many times. Uh -huh. And uh, Wells was a, a big fighter base. Right. Wells, Austria. And they knew we were coming and they, they were, were waiting coming. for us. They were I, I, there must have been a hundred of them, 109s, 190s, JJ 22s, everything was out there. The, uh, was the 376 in the lead? No. No, no 451 took the lead on that mission. It's in the uh, our deal. I gave a copy to uh, the, the lead was for. We were tailing Charlie. There was 18 aircrafts out of the 376. Right. There was a, uh, another one of the group that was in was the uh, Cottontails. The 450s? Yeah. Okay. They were, they, they were supposedly, um, the German fighters went after, supposedly went after the 450s. They had the big A, uh, I the think, big, on the tail. Right, the big, big white. White, uh, so they kind of picked them out a little bit. No, they just, we were we were crippled and they just kept coming after kept us coming too. coming after you? Yeah. And I know we, we got a few aircraft ourselves, our gunners, kind of, before we got out. Before you got out. So White peeled off on the whole formation to get a pull. No, they just went ahead. Oh, they just they just <laughs> they kept just because we were tailing Charlie coming. So you in were a over. straggler. You were just kind of. Yeah. And then then we were straggler. Of course, we got hit first uh, in the uh, in the tail area. It got shattered a vertical stabilizer and so forth. Uh -huh. that, that, that's, we had trouble, but we dropped the bombs over the target. Got it. Started to head out, but we, they're heading away, and the pilot called them, "Wait for us! Wait for us!" And they, they couldn't slow down. They were just we just lost them. So we fell in with another formation for a, for a short while too, and then finally they they got away from us too. So we were by ourselves by the time we bailed out. Did you have any fighter escort on that mission? No, but when I came down on a shooter, P thirty eight flew around me, and I waved to him. Oh, he really? Waved to me. Okay. Because I know that they would they would escort you into the IP and leave. They when we were coming out, they would be, be there for joining us. And when the thirty eights came, then they we lost the fighters left. Yes. Too, the one on that. But between the IP and the but that and, the, and coming in and, and going out, and then the thirty eights came and then they left. Hmm. Interesting. So, I'm trying to think of some other things. Do you have anything, any other particular topics you'd like to no. chat about? No, I just, I'm grateful and thankful for for everything that happened. And it, 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 I had a lot of luck in my life. Now, I was trying to remember some of the comments you made. So did you enlist right out of high school? In fact, I, I, I left high school. Oh, you left high school? I, I, when I, in, in my third year. Okay. And I went to work in St. Louis and for Eisenhower and Hauser Bush. And then I, I left them and went to, uh, I was about 42, I, it was October 42 when I went back to Chicago and enlisted. Okay. So you were, you're not No, I, I enlisted in, 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 in I'm trying to remember now. It was sometime in July when I, I went back to Chicago and, and uh, in '42, and, and but you then I, I enlisted and wanted to be a paratrooper. 
So you went down to St. Louis and worked for Anheuser Busch. Yeah, before. Before. Right after. Uh, well, for right after uh, Pearl Harbor. So Anheuser Busch was punching out beer even back then. Well, they were reluctant to, to to keep it because they thought maybe I was draft age and they be training me and then they couldn't do it. So then I went to work for uh, uh, Bruce Terminex Corporation, termite treatment, mm -hmm. for, okay. for a couple of months. And then, then I finally just went home and I lived. Okay. Um, you might have said, may have said this, but I forget. So after World War II, but before the Korean, what, what were you doing or what, were you, what was your occupation? I went, to, I went to school. Went to school? Yeah. GI Bill? On a GI Bill. And what did you study? Economics. Economics. Okay. And you graduated, I take it? No, no. I finished at Ball State. I was trans I was oh, you went going to, to night State. school and, and then I was transferred to Detroit and I not to Ball State but to uh, Wayne State University. Wayne State. Okay. And I finished off there. Okay. But and I put it put close to three years for Northwestern. Okay. And then uh, so when did you graduate with your economics degree? Oh boy, this is coming once it's a 1966 to 62. It would be about 64. About 64? Yeah. Okay. So you were going to school when you got called up for the Korean conflict? Oh no, I, all this was after the Korean. I came oh, out of Korea. After the Korea. I came out of Korea. I went in Korea in 1950. Right. And came out in 52. And what did you do between 45 47. and 46? I worked, uh, I was in the jukebox business. Jukebox business. <laughs> Yeah, I worked for a company at Seaberg, jute boxes, okay. and I did installations and uh, repairs and so forth. Okay, then you got called. And up I was going to school going also. Going to school also. Yeah. So then you got called up and served in Korea, and got out of Korea at fifty-two. Got out in fifty-two, and I went into the real estate business. Then went to work for a. a that was I was still in the real estate business, but I worked nights for ADT on alarm systems, and then I. Uh, left there and uh, went to the Veterans Administration and instead 30 years with them. Okay. Now, you were, you'd were married by this time, so when you went oh, to Korea... Oh, I got Korea, married in 47. So, so... When I went to Korea, my wife was alone. What did... Was your wife concerned about you going to Korea? Yeah, I'm sure she was. But, but, but I assume you knew you weren't going to probably be in combat. Or oh, no, we knew we were, gonna, we were troop carrier. We knew we would be flying in there. In fact, I dropped supplies to the Army, too, yeah. up at... Uh, did, you fly out at the, did you fly out of did, Japan? Yeah, okay. at Chicago. Well, I flew first to Chicago Zone. It was, it was a whole Chicago group. Uh -huh. And we went to uh, Fukuoka, the island Kyushu. Uh -huh. And there was a whole Chicago base. We even had Chicago street signs on the base. So. But then I, I went up with a, it was split up and a, a few of us went up to Tachikawa. And I flew mainly out of Tachikawa mm. near Japan, uh, Tokyo. Okay. Did, uh, they flew B-29s, right? Oh well, yeah, I wasn't uh, far from a B-29 base. You said you were not far from? Yeah, they were, they were fairly close. We were, in fact, we went over to their, off, to their NCO club because they had a better club than we did. Than you did? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you were over there for two years and then came out and then yeah. finally went to school. Came back and finally went to school. And then I went I went back to Northwestern Nights and worked for a, a, a tape recording company. Okay. And, uh, so how did you end up in Indianapolis? Oh, I uh, this was out of Chicago. Right. Most of my job. Yeah. Went to, uh, I went to Detroit yeah. and worked out of there for 10 years and then took a higher position up in Indianapolis. And I did a little stint a while in Washington. Uh -huh. So I, I, I got around it. It worked out well for me. Good. OK. So um, as a crew chief, the, when you went over there, the, the group was flying B-24Ds, D models, right? When oh, the D's. Went over, and yeah, then, the Rs. And then they uh, came up with some H's and H's so H's forth. There. Was there a lot of difference in the main end? Between the models? Not in, so much in the maintenance, no, but it, it, the, the structure of the aircraft was different. They start, you know, they had nose turns then, right. and uh, different features came on, or better features that came uh -huh. on. But uh, the maintenance always stayed the same. Stayed the, same. The, the engines were always the same. Same engines. 
And did, you were saying earlier you, you were involved in the checkout flights. Did you check out? The, the well, we had, when we did engine changes, yeah. we usually did them overnight. Okay. And then that morning we'd come out and we'd test the aircraft and you know, always flew with them just to see how it was going. Okay. We uh, didn't have to, we just did it on our own. I believe it was the 58th Service Squadron. Were they? They were instrumental in the primary changes, yeah. Okay, so what was your relationship? With them, just yeah. work with them. They they were they did the primary work. We were just there checking in and helping out. That's all. So so you were assigned to the three seventy six, but then you. I was assigned to three seventy six, the five fifteen squadron. I was assigned to that one aircraft. There were four of us maintenance men on the aircraft. And you were assigned to eighty eight, yeah. and then you worked with the fifty eighth. When they came out on special jobs, special you know, jobs. we they, it was specialized prop work. Electrical work, oxygen, uh, different, they were all different groups that came out. Same as the armament people. Okay. So, okay. So, so you then, you and the, your three associates maintained a particular airplane. It was our job to check her out in the morning, make sure everything was going, working good. Check, run them up and check them out. Um, were you instrumental in deciding that the plane was war weary? War weary? Yeah, I mean, if at some point in time, doesn't somebody look at this airplane and say, no, this airplane's but too old? Usually, if it, if it come back in, shot up pretty bad. You had other crews come out, skin mm -hmm. specialists that were doing yeah. the repairs and the damage and so forth. And these were these were specialized groups that would come out and do that work. Mm -hmm. I would never patch a bullet hole or anything else like that. I had a, I had a, a, a guy come out that would do the aluminum work and so forth like that. And change okay. It. So it was a process of deciding the airplane was. Yeah, that it was a it was a combination deal. It was usually the line chief that made the decision that we'll scrap this one. Going back to the early forty two, one of the comments I hear from some of the other Halpro was just the lack of supplies, the lack of parts. I'm sure they was, had was that Yeah, I didn't get in with the Halpro. I right. afterwards, but I, I'm sure it was. So it was even some. Trouble for us. I was going to ask, was it, but when you got yeah. there, were they still Sometimes we made parts. Sometimes you made parts. We didn't, but the, we would have somebody over in a machine shop or something like that. Did you uh, scavenge parts off of some of the other oh, airplanes? Yes, yeah, cannibalized. Cannibalized? Any, any wreck to come in there, those ships were cannibalized. Okay. Did you have a. They also talked about working with the RAF. Did, but by the time you got there, were you, were you still working with the RAF? Or did you I don't much, recall that. You don't recall working? No. What about the 98? I've had, I've had some RAF guys come over, uh, and I've seen them go with, on a mission. Uh-huh. You know, they go and go back and forth. But, uh, and uh, in Fitterville, our whole area was protected by Australian. By Australian. And, and aircraft gunners. And I used to go have just shoot the breeze with them uh -huh. in the evening and go over there and got acquainted with them and so forth. Okay. Now, the 98th was also somewhere Not too far there. away. Not yeah. too far away, yeah. but you didn't really mingle with no, them either. No, not near. There were, did you exchange planes with them or did you? Not to my knowledge. Not to your knowledge. No, Once plane no I never had a, a bomb crew from the 98th come over and fly. Or vice versa. Or, or vice versa that I know of. So you were pretty much operating as your own independent your own unit independent by that group, time. Yeah. And when you joined, it was already the 376? Oh, yeah. It went Benghazi the was the 376. Already the 376. That's right. Because it was originally Halpro, and then it became Halpro the first. Halpro, and then became, the that was part of the 9th Air Force then, and then we came into the 376, and then ultimately become the 15th. Right. For a period of time, it was also the 12th, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 12th for, for, for a short period of time. Who was the uh, group commander when you were there? In my company. Compton was, was yeah, already? KK. KK yeah. was already there. Yeah. How was what was KK like? Or did you meet him very much? A couple of times I'd see him, but not not too often. I heard he had his own plane. Yes, he did. He did. Yeah. What what was it? A P? I don't know. A forty-seven. P forty-seven. Yeah. Do you? Fly I heard around? about it. I've you never. Okay. I've seen it take off a couple of times and so forth. Fly around, but. Huh. Okay. Um. During those early missions out of Africa, planes would. Divert and land at Malta was one of the. If they had difficulties, Malta was a was a landing base for them. Short runway, but they made it. With the and then we would have crews go over there, fix them up, and fly them back. Were you ever? Were you ever? No, I never did. Never did. Because no. I've I've talked with some gentlemen who landed their yeah. plane. Oh sure. Apparently, it was 
Like you said, yeah. it was a short runway and it was a dicey yeah. prospect. But 88, uh, our ship always made it back. Always made it back. Always made it back. We never had any trouble. I'd come back with holes in and trouble once in a while, but none very difficult. Hmm. Okay. So we were kind of a lucky ship and they were always trying to fly us. I know the bomb crews were, were hoping it could get 88 to come out. <laughs> really. Everybody, it's, it's, everybody wanted yeah. 88 to sign. Oh, that's a good one. We could make that one. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, Trying to think of some of the other, other, yeah. other topics. It's interesting, you know, that, that I live in in Austria six months out of the year, and I can have a chance to go to all the bomb sites that were being annoyed that I'm in there all the time. Brooklyn, I mean, uh, Linz, Steyr, all that. Have you? Bratislava. Well, I know, like, like Rick. They're all built up. You can't tell the difference. Right. Mina Neustadt was 98% destroyed. Right. And uh, I have a book on it that shows that it's just completely destroyed. But you can't tell it today. It's it's a thriving city, well built up. And so. I, I but I'm assisting. There's a museum, an aircraft museum, primarily a German, uh, Austrian aircraft and so forth. But I, I, I'm I introducing the 376. I brought the painting over there. I have some of the books uh -huh. over there with them, gave it to them. But they're kind of reluctant to set up an exhibition of the 376. Why is that? Uh, well, there's still a little animosity, I'm sure, that about, the bombing, about them. the bombing them, especially to a city that's destroyed. It's, it's somebody like in Dresden, if you... Uh, went to the Dresden, there's people in the Dresden that aren't very happy to see you either. I met a, uh, this is a personal story, I met a guy who was four years old in Naples in 43. Another area. And he remembers, he remembers going yeah. into the bomb shelters yeah. in early 43. Yeah. But I, I helped uh, Rick Yerick with his, uh, I introduced him, there's quite a few uh, historians they're great, uh, some uh, yeah. in, in Austria and Germany, and I introduced him to a couple, and I know a few there that I always meet with, and uh, we just exchange information and so forth. And there, there's a very, they have a very great interest in the, in the world. Yes, now I know Rick's uncle was shot down on the same mission that That's you right. were shot I, down on. I introduced him to Wolfgang at the Pride, and they, he goes over there now trying to find parts and so forth. Have you? Uh, I know that they <coughs> they're doing research, obviously, from the German side of the of the yeah. battles. Have you, Have you ever met any pilots that German oh, yeah. pilots that were oh, on sure. were shooting at you? Yeah, okay. I I take a lot of trips, bus trips. They're uh -huh. very reasonable, and uh, I've gone trips on Sicily and Morocco and and Spain and and Italy and so. Forth. And uh, every once in a while on the tour, there would be a an ex pilot, one hundred nine pilot, or something like that. Uh -huh. And we we would talk. Of course, the first thing they'd tell me they never shot down a B twenty four. Yeah, the first thing they tell you, right? <laughs> I never shot at a twenty four. Same way I would never tell the people in in Vienna Neustadt that we bombed. We bombed. It was a three seventy six that bombed them. They knew it. But you're not going to openly openly yeah. say it. Because there's a there's still a a little animosity that exists. That you know, they hate my. Yeah, they, they hate your guts because you, well, maybe their family was killed or relatives or something like that during the bombing. Do you get the same thing? With, do you get that same sense from the researchers? Or is it more no, just, just the no, general population? It's, no, it's, it's the same, but it, they, these researchers are, are familiar. The fact that it, it took action on both sides. Sure. And uh, all they're interested in it. The Germans were very meticulous in recording every bomb drop. I have a book to show where every bomb fell. And they could see it. Uh, you just they, they made it a point and drew drafts on it, maps on it, and everything. I mean, where else. the Allied bombs dropped? Yeah. Yeah. Rick has that book now. I've huh. been using it. Um, Kevin, another, so this may be, remember, there were, the 376 had a Yugoslav contingent, att contingent attached they were to with the 512. The 512. Now, I we, never met him. When I was going to ask, was back to the your Yugoslav 
time with Tito and such, were they aware that there were Yugoslav pilots flying? No. With the three? They were not no. aware of that? No. Okay. no. Three of the planes got shot down. I know. Most of them. I don't most know if, they, if any of them were shot down over Yugoslav. I think it was three out of four, really. That, yes. That, yeah. But they did not know that they were? No. Okay. Not when I was there. Right. Okay. And no, in no, fact, I, was, I don't think they were flying when I was there either. I was trying to think. I think their first mission was in late 43. But yeah. uh, like you said, they were in the 512. And I, I take it there wasn't a whole lot of mingling even between the squadrons. No, oh, there wasn't really. Okay. We had our, everything was our own. We had our own mess halls, uh -huh. our own clinics, everything. Okay. So it, there was very little intermingling okay. that I know of. Okay. Even among the bomb crews or the maintenance people. Uh huh. What, what was in the? You brought in a packet of the two books, but a packet of. Is that well, I just I brought. I gave a copy uh, to uh, the uh, showing the bomb runs. I thought maybe if you didn't have it, you could keep it. Uh, keep the uh, uh -huh. keep the book to use it and get photographs when they're talking about their missions. It would be recorded here. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you need it for now, you're more than welcome to have it. Okay, I didn't know. If and you then I'll pick it up afterward from you. Had and then the other one was just, it, there's a story on page uh, 347 for uh, the Steyer raid, the first Steyer raid that the one you were that, on, the you Walker got, talked about. Yeah. The one that you got shot down on. Yeah. Okay. Did you help, did, did you, were you involved in writing the Walker book? No. No. Okay. No. I had the second reunion in Chicago. I was on the committee for that. Uh, okay, for the 376. What, what time? When, that was what? 40? That was in 1948. 48, okay. And then I lost the group for a while. But the uh, former attorney for the 376 is from Indianapolis. The former. And I, he passed away. Okay. And I, uh, I was talking to him one time, and he mentioned that they're having a reunion. And for God's sake, I was a 376. So I got in contact with Chapman and then came through. Started, started rejoining. Yeah. So this is. OK. So I assume you, you I take it you love joining the, I mean, talk, coming to the reunions and. Oh, yeah. And the yeah it's always nice to, to, to reiterate again and, and to relive some of the experiences. And I said that. Some of the guys remember the, the 88 ship, they flew it. And, uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I flew that. And boy, that, that was our lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a sense of pride that you helped maintain yes, it that, did. that plane? Yes, it does. That was, not, that was a fairly rare thing to have one plane that flew. That made all of the trips. All those missions yeah. and never mm -hmm. had trouble. And came back to the Colorado Springs. And I think Boomerang was not there when you were shot. That no, was the that other wasn't. 376 I plane. Remember that, that. Some of the ships, you know, had the decals and so forth yeah. on them, but uh, a lot of us didn't. But Boomerang also was one of the more famous for, for yes, some, it was. always bringing the guys yes, back. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It's, yeah, Walker has it in his book, too. Yes. So, so the, is, it, is there a picture of 88 in here? No. No? Uh, no, but I, I had. Do you have a picture of 88? Not the 88, just the. The maintenance crew in, in front of the ship, all that was the nose turd on it, but part of the number. But I haven't seen any story on 88 in, in the Walker's book yet. Of course, I haven't been all through it. I've read it, gone through it several times, but I still, there's an awful lot to read in there. Well, have you ever thought writing about no. your own little story no, about 88? People, people indicated the fact, well, you ought to write about your experience. No, I was, I'm not interested. Having this interview as close as you want to, to recap, recounting your, your involvement in that airplane. It, uh, it pleases me that I can. Yes. And uh, okay. it, it's, uh, it's always nice to know that you did a little bit. And you did a little bit. I had kept my part. Okay. You know. Well, I think we're close to wrapping it up. Is there anything else you'd like to add or say? No, that's all. I thank, you. I thank you for the opportunity to well, it's, it's speak. It's my pleasure, and, our pleasure. And uh, I wish you a lot of success with it, too. Okay, well, thank you for coming by. and uh, Appreciate it. Okay, good.